customer focus, accountability, professionalism, honesty, and family. Five core values that have served as the foundation of success for three companies, each with a rich history that would one day be shared. For In Gold Ring Corporation, National Distributing Company, and Block Distributing Company, people and relationships mattered most. It was that shared sense of family that would eventually serve as a common thread, bringing each company from its humble beginnings to what they have collectively become today, the second largest wine and spirits distributor in the nation. This is the story of Republic National Distributing Company. In 1898, Newman Goldring, an immigrant from Eastern Europe, entered the beverage alcohol wholesaling business by founding the In Goldring Corporation, the first licensed beer distributor in Florida. Just two decades later, the United States would pass the 18th Amendment, banning the sale of alcoholic beverages and beginning a 13-year stretch of prohibition. By 1933, the 21st Amendment repealed prohibition allowing alcohol to once again be manufactured and distributed. Two years after repeal, another immigrant, this one hailing from Greece, would found the Dixie Wine Company in Atlanta, Georgia. His name, Chris Carlos. My grandfather started this thing. Very smart man, didn't, did not drink, loved his Cuban cigars, put ketchup on everything, loved his wife, loved his children, but pretty hard guy. A driver. But again, came from Greece, no money, in a country, doesn't speak the language. He was an interesting man. I actually I actually found a lot of intriguing things with him. He, he was very honest. He was very uh, straightforward. Uh, not a man of a lot of words, but the few he said you listen to. While Chris Carlos focused on getting Dixie Wine Company off the ground, Another individual was looking to finish what he had started pre-prohibition. In 1939, Newman Goldring and his son Stephen would reopen the In Goldring Corporation in Florida. Prohibition ends, and years after it ends, the state of uh, Florida went wet in 1939. And in that year, my father decided to go in the wholesale business. But he was not only in the wholesale business, he uh, had a little bar, he was bottling wine, uh, he was filling orders at night, delivering them during the daytime, and, and had a real mama-pop kind of operation. That same year, another driven individual was looking to get his start in the industry. Edward J. Block would soon find that opportunity in San Antonio. He was charismatic. He was uh, not a, a big man. He was not of stature, uh, five, seven, five, eight, five, five, eight, five, nine, something like that. He could walk into a room and own it. He is incredibly charismatic. Uh, wasn't an attractive guy. And I think every woman in the in the room was like magnetic to him. He was fun, big smile, very talented. Played the piano by ear loved everybody and could be as tough as nails and had a fight in him that you just didn't want to cross that line. My father was a native of Denver and was took a job as a, he didn't go to college, took a job as a route salesman for a wholesale liquor distributor in, in Colorado called Colorado Beverage Company. And his territory was uh, principally the mining towns of Southern Colorado. My father at the time was 23 years old. So the same guy that owned the Colorado Beverage Company also had a, a wine bottling operation here in San Antonio. He liked my father, he, my father was single, he was bright and energetic. And he asked my father to, to come down to San Antonio see if he could save this wine bottling operation, which was not doing very well. My father tried like heck to, uh, to save it and, and was unable to do it. Within a year and a half, Ed Block knew he had learned enough about the business to venture out on his own. 
And in short order, in 1948, 49, 1950, we got Seagram, we got Hubline, we got Brown Foreman, and then we got Bacardi. So these were all major drivers of growth that enabled us to be a, a pretty good player in the, in the uh, distributing business. Meanwhile, the Dixie Wine Company was about to take a different course as Chris Carlos met a business-savvy entrepreneur by the name of Al Davis. He, he, would, he was a guy that would light up the room, had a lot of charisma, the consummate salesman. You know, the old uh, saying you could sell ice, you know, ice to the Eskimos. I mean, he, he was a great salesman. He went and met Mr. Carlos. They didn't know each other. And he said, look, I think I can get some liquor lines. Do you want to be partners? And from, from what he said, you know, that's, that's how they got started. My grandfather's strength was really in the operation, the, uh, the financial side of the business. And, uh, and he ran the finance of the business up to uh, um, the day he retired. Whereas Al Davis, the reason that partnership worked was Al knew the spirits business, was a uh, sales personality on the street. He understood how to go forth in that way. How in the world the two of them were able to make this go because the age difference was very dramatic. The culture we know was different, the age difference was huge. Mr. Carlos and Mr. Davis, as they were known to call one another, entered into the unlikeliest of partnerships to form National Distributing Company in Atlanta in 1942. What happened, and the reason we're called, we were called National Distributing Company was that he did, he got the National Distillers Line, which was a big supplier back then, and so they changed the name to National Distributing Company, and you know that's that's how that came about. And he brought the, brought the liquor line in, and they, you know, they, things were working well, and you know, they were partners. Shortly after, National Distributing Company, or NDC, would begin its expansion into the Florida market. Around that same time, the N Gold Ring Corporation was set to expand as well. There was a guy from Seagram by the name of Malcolm Woldenberg, who was the third employee of Seagram in the United States, who was calling on my father. And they became best friends. In 1944, Mal said to my father, we got a lousy distributor for Seagram in the United States, uh, and we need to go over there and open up a distributorship, and we'll be partners. In 1946, the N. Goldring Corporation founded Magnolia Liquor in New Orleans, which would later be named Magnolia Marketing. Over the next 20 years, Block Distributing, Goldring's Magnolia Marketing, and National Distributing Company would continue to build on what they had started. But the landscape changed. Those once small-time operations were no longer just that. Soon they would experience significant growth marked by consolidation.